Hello, everyone. Today we're going to get to know Affinity Designer. Even if you're completely new to the program, you're welcome to join in. Affinity Designer has three main modes, Designer for Vector Work, Pixel for Raster Work, and Export Persona. First, let's customize the interface to fit our style. On the left side, you'll find the toolbar. You can double-click to move it around, and double-click again to return it to its original position. You can customize the tools in this bar by going to the View menu at the top and selecting Customize Tools to add or remove tools as you like. On the right side, you have your panels, which you can also drag around. If you want them to stick to a specific spot, move the panel to one of the blue docking guides. This works on both the left and right sides. If you need to reset everything, go to the window menu, select Studio, and click Reset Studio. If you're missing any tools or want to add new ones, check the window menu again. At the top, you'll find the toolbar, which can also be customized by going to view a customized toolbar. You can drag in shortcuts to replace others. We need to know some shortcut keys to make our work more convenient and faster. Use the spacebar key for panning, and to rotate the document, go to view and click rotate, left or right, or hold the alt key and scroll with your mouse wheel. Zooming can be done with the Z key or by scrolling with the mouse wheel. And for fitting the document to your screen, press Ctrl plus zero. Now that we've covered the workspace, let's move on to the pen tool. Click to start a line, click again for a straight line, or click and drag to create a curve. Double click to stop, or press the escape key. Click the last point again to switch to drawing in smart mode. Press the control key to select the last point and continue drawing. Holding the control key lets you pick the node or curve you want to edit without switching between the pen and node tools. The pen tool works hand in hand with the node tool to edit lines. Hold the alt key to make straight lines. And the control key to remove the line between two points. As I've mentioned before, vector programs work quite similarly. When using any tool, the context toolbar will display additional functions. Try them out. To delete a point, hold Ctrl, add a point, and then delete the unwanted point, or select the whole path and use the Shape Builder tool. Another way to delete is to group all the curves and then use the eraser tool in Pixel Persona. These are just a few basics to get you started. Let's start drawing this monkey. Use the same basic technique to close off your shapes as much as possible so there are no gaps between the lines. If you have time, overlap the lines and erase the extra parts later.
As I've said in previous videos, when you fill with vector colors, you need to be careful. Snap the last node to the other lines to close the shape before using the Vector Flood Fill tool to color. For more details, you can check out my video, Inking and Coloring in Vector Mode, on my channel. Have you seen Illustrator's new tool? You just draw a rough sketch, hit generate, and it gives you exactly what you need. What do you think? Will we still be drawing like this in the future? Anyway, back to what we were doing. Once you're done drawing, we'll switch to coloring in vector mode. Select all the stroke curves, and use the Vector Flood Fill tool to apply colors. Take a look at the monkey. Some areas can be filled with the Vector Flood Fill tool, but others can't. All the lines are touching, but you don't know where the gap is. To fix this, select all the curves, go to the Layer menu, and expand the stroke before filling. This command uses a lot of memory, so if your system is low on RAM, it might freeze. It's easier to expand the stroke when you can't find the gap, but make sure all your lines are touching everywhere. Once you're done, combine areas of the same color into one piece to make it easier to add shadows, highlights, or other details. Select a color, go to the Select menu, and choose Select Same Fill Color, then click Add to combine everything into one piece. This is why I choose Screen Shortcuts on my Wacom to speed up the workflow. To add details to any area, select the shape you want, click Insert inside the selection at the top, and use various vector tools to add shadows and highlights. Another method is to select all colored areas, duplicate them, and merge them into one piece for shading. Turn off the fill color and move this layer to the top. Select it, click insert inside the selection, and draw the shadow. You can also draw shadows in the same group and set the group to multiply. As you can see, working in groups means you won't need to add a new shader every time. Use Multiply for shadows and Overlay for highlights. This way, you can change the character's colors later without having to adjust the shadows and highlights. Once you're happy with your work, you can add effects to your character. Be aware that some effects, like shadows or blurs, will be rasterized during export.
If you need an outline for your character, duplicate all the colored layers, combine them into one, and use the contour tool to turn it all into vectors. This method allows you to export as an SVG file, instead of using the outline effect. When exporting files, if you're selling your work or need high-quality prints, it's a good idea to learn more about exporting from professionals. There are also many small details to understand in Affinity Designer. Exporting in Affinity Designer is simple. Once you've finished your design, just go to File and Export. From there, you'll see a variety of formats to choose from, like PNG, JPEG, PDF, and SVG. Pick the format that suits your needs, adjust the settings if necessary, and click Export. The file will then be saved to your chosen location, ready for use. Affinity Designer cannot export AI files directly. Someone once told me to export it as a PDF instead and then change the file extension from .pdf to .ai. I haven't tried this yet, but if you test it out and see how it works, let me know. For beginners, I don't think this program is as hard as it seems. It doesn't take much time to learn if you're familiar with Illustrator or other vector programs. I'll keep improving the content in my videos and updating older ones so that everyone can better understand and decide how to proceed with their art. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.